SRT and Dodge are like, how about we throw 700 horsepower in another one? Mazda tells us when and where the new Miata MX-5 will be revealed, and Audi is all about some electric juice. Plus, VW will produce the Beetle Dune concept. And it's Monday, okay, so what do we got? We got Commenter of the Week. That's right. What's up, everybody? I'm Derek D. You're watching Fast Lane Daily, and I hope you had a great 4th of July weekend. See some fireworks, AK? No. no. I did. So I'm an Asbury. Are we good? <laughs> Do you remember that off-road Beetle concept VW revealed at the Detroit Auto Show? Well, good. I didn't either. But it's called the Dune. And what I'm here to tell you is that VW has confirmed it will make it to production in 2016. So we'll probably see the street ready version at a major auto show next year. Both the coupe and convertible Beetles will get Dune versions. The concept is wider, longer, higher, off the ground than the normal car. And as you can see, the styling is unique. It looks cool. In related news, glad they didn't go with Bill from marketing's idea to call it the Dung Beetle. Ugh, Bill has since been fired. Yeah. So way off. They were like, what? It's Dune. Yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> Audi is stoked about its electric and hybrid vehicle technology. So stoked, in fact, that the automaker will make every single one of its key models with a plug-in hybrid option by 2020. For buyers who want the benefits of electric power in terms of fuel economy, but aren't ready to give up on the gas or petrol, as our folks across the pond say. Plug-in hybrids are a win-win, and I agree that they are, Max. Oh, yeah. Sure are. The time has almost come for Mazda to introduce the next generation of its classic roadster, the MX-5 Miata. Now we know exactly when and where, and that's going to be on September 3rd at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca, thanks to this uh, little teaser clip here, where they also tell us it's not an evolution, it's a revolution. And then you hear the new car driving and revving. Get it? Revolution. Anyway, Mazda will also reveal the car in Spain and Japan at the same time. We know the new car will be smaller and about tw uh, sorry, 220 pounds lighter than the current car. And with that sexy new Kodo design language, hey, it should look a lot better too. Looking forward to that. You, Erica? Yep. Sure. Great job, by the way, this weekend, right? Erica's. Layla? Oh yeah, nice. I couldn't stop job. watching. A lot of positive feedback on that. All right. You may have heard this. Dodge SRT just dropped a bombshell that the Challenger Hellcat won't have just 600 horsepower like we were expecting. No. But instead, it will have 707. 707. And that's straight from the factory. Yeah, I know. Pretty intense. It will also have a massive 650 pound-feet of what? Sure. 650? What? What? Only elite supercars like the Lamborghini Aventador <laughs> make numbers like that. Well, not anymore. Now we're learning Dodge might also put that supercharged V8 into the Charger. That would make the Hellcat Charger one of the fastest production sedans on the market and really make the next Cadillac CTSV have to pull some serious magic to get up on par with it. To like Michael Jackson said, to beat it. Come on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I heard that. <laughs> also, <laughs> also, most of the East Coast was hit Thursday and Friday by a tropical storm with some pretty heavy winds and rain, right? I was in it. Chris Scuddy, a friend of our writer Miles, woke up to this. Yeah, a massive tree just chilling on his Jeep Grand Cherokee, pinning it to the ground. No one was hurt, but apparently the Jeep kind of saved the house from getting hit as well, which is good. The car actually started right up once the tree was moved. Mm -hmm. But now if uh, only Jeep would help him out with some repairs, I doubt it. I hope your insurance company doesn't screw you over though, man. Yeah. You know, sometimes they, they can be jerks. Hope you uh, get a new car. All right, uh, you guys know what time it is. Let's see, it was the 4th of July on Friday. Yeah. Comment of the week! Ah! Got it. Check mark. Comments are of the week. Comments are show. Yeah, comments are of the week. 
comments. Oh, wow. Ooh, nice. Wow. Tom taking the reins. This comment comes from YouTube fan Amparco9. And he said, hey, FLD, uh, I was wondering why you do the whole show in essentially one take. Doesn't that make it harder to get the vid right? Not saying I don't like the format, but I wonder what led to that decision. Hmm. All right. Well, Amparco9, let me, uh, let me answer that question for you. We, uh, we used to do the show in multiple takes, but we just found it easier in the edit if we can rock it all in one. And when you cut to multiple things in full screen, it kind of kind of breaks the flow of the episode a little bit. Obviously, it's on me to be able to do the entire show in one take, right, Max? Oh, yeah. Uh, sometimes it takes a few times to get it right. But usually, I can get it in one try on the first try. Yeah. You know? Been known to do that. That's right. And for those of you who work in the entertainment industry, you know that's, that's not that easy no, of a task. No, right. You know, a little bit of this. <laughs> we try to think of it as a... Don't shake your head, Erica. We try to think of it as uh, if the show was live, right? So you only really get one shot, Yeah. right? We shoot the intro first, then the body, but on a day like today with this exact segment that we are currently in, Commenter of the Week, we actually have a cut in the body when it goes to the cow graphic and jingle. And yes, that is me singing the jingle as well, FYI, in case you didn't know. So to answer your question, if it took me a bunch of takes to get it right, yes, it would be a little harder, but it doesn't, so doing it all in one, uh, makes it easier for Max and Erica when they edit the show, right? Totally. Yeah, totes my goats. So, uh, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Why did I say that? This might have to be another take. I yeah. uh, hope that answers your question. We appreciate when you guys are interested in the workings of the show and we try to uh, relay that to you. Like, maybe go back and watch Dylan's. We intern Dylan did a whole behind the scenes yeah, of the show. Yeah, breakdown. So you might want to check that out. Break All right, cool. Thank you for your comments. Keep them coming. All right, we appreciate it. All right, so the new Mazda Miata MX-5 is coming out in a couple months. Our FLD question of the day is, what do you hope the new MX-5 has that the old one didn't? Personally, the current one is pretty awesome, but not a huge fan of the front look of it. So I just want to know what it's going to look like. That's basically it for me. So let us know. Use hashtag FLDQ of the D, and of course, you can send in your own to, uh, what is that email, AK? Tips at FastLaneDaily.com. Couldn't have said it any clearer. Yeah. And that's going to do it for Fast Lane Daily today. I'm Derek D. Shout out to a few fans who came up to me this weekend and said they love the show. Always appreciate that. So thank you guys for watching. And uh, we will talk to you tomorrow. That's right. No, man, on Saturday when I said after I saw the fireworks, I went to Porta. And I was going to the, uh, I was going to the bathroom. This dude was like, no way. He was like, I live in Belmar. I knew I'd bump into you at some point. Towards the, the back room. It's too much information. You're at port. You're at a bar. At a bar. <laughs> this guy comes up to you. I'm yes. a big fan of the show. So he's a fan of the show. Hmm. I saw those two guys in the urinal, urinal together. Oh my God, Derek D. Yeah, that'd be awkward. <laughs> Derek D. Wow. FastLaneDaily.com or YouTube, hosted by my man Derek D. Subscribe right now, don't just take it from me.